Hello and welcome to my 300 subscriber bonus video and I just am so happy today. I mean every new subscriber I get brings me so much joy but this feels like a particularly awesome milestone and I'm so excited and so I asked you guys on Twitter what you'd like me to do for my 300 subscriber um, video and you guys said you wanted to know my favorite books of all time. And this is a video I've been like wanting to do, but I didn't know when the right time would be for it. And I thought this would be a good one. Um, and you guys voted for it. So this is what we're doing. Um, so I actually have my top 15 books of all time. Um, one of which is new from this year. And one is from last year, which is actually really cool. But otherwise I've had kind of the same books for a while now. Um, but I thought I'd do the top 15 because 10 is just a little too few. And this is, you know, for my channel. So I'm I'm excited. Um, first caveat, um, this is going to be a video full of gushing, obviously, because it's all my favorite things. So just be prepared for that. And then first off, I'm going to start with, I mean, this book is kind of controversial at this point. But also, I think that you'll agree with me when I tell you the reason why. It is my number 15. And that is Twilight by Stephanie Mayer. No, I'm not making excuses. These are my top favorite books. But I'll tell you why. I read this book for the first time when I was in 8th grade. Um, I had started reading pretty steadily by that time. Since about 5th grade, I've been reading steadily. But this ignited my love for fantasy. I'd mostly been reading, like, historical romance or, like, history or some, like, contemporary. And this was the first, like, fantasy I ever read. <clears throat> it was the first vampire story I'd ever read. And I loved it. And I've since learned better, as some of us do, as to, you know, why it's not the greatest thing that ever was. But it also was the first fandom I was ever in. I didn't get into Harry Potter until almost four years later. So, I mean, Twilight has a special place in my heart because almost every book that comes after it on this list is because I read this book in eighth grade. So it has a special place in my heart. I will still read everything that Stephanie Meyer writes and I'm not going to be ashamed of it, even though I don't necessarily want to read it again. It is still on the list. So this is number 15. Now to get into some more serious on the list. So number 14 is actually from this year and I actually don't have it with me because actually two books on this list my sister's currently reading <laughs> because they were two of my favorite books from the last couple of years. So number 14 is Illuminae by um, Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And one of the other caveats I wanted to say is I will be, there are books in a lot of my favorite fandoms, but I am going to be showing you the book that is my favorite in each series, not just saying this series as a whole, because that's a different video. I'm talking about the individual book that I like the most. So The Illuminae Files is is a great series, but specifically Illuminae is my favorite in the series. It grabbed my attention so quickly. I thought the setup of the story was fascinating. This book has been in like 10, 15 videos I've made last year, so just go check out any of those if you want more in depth. This isn't supposed to be a synopsis. This is like why I love them. And yeah, I just love the way the story was told. The audio was so amazing. And I just loved his characters. Like, even though it wasn't written in a traditional way, I was still so enamored with Ezra and Katie. And I don't know how that happened through files, through web clips, through different files. Like, how? But I loved them. And so um, that is why that is on my list. Number 13, I do have a classic on this list. It's just not quite far up as everything else. Um, that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is my favorite classic. The only one of two, only one of two classics I've read more than once. Um, I'm hoping to change that this year as I'm planning a reread of Jane Eyre this year, as well as I'm going to step into some other classics. I have a goal to read more of them this year. But I love Jane. I see um, some of myself in her. I'm definitely not as introverted and quiet as her or obscure, plain, quiet and little, but I love her fire. I love her faith. I love her belief that she's worth something, even though people tell her that she isn't. 
And I love Mr. Rochester. I love that forbidden kind of love and the surprise when that person loves you back. And there's just something that will always keep Jane Eyre in my heart. And it is a classic that I love to come back to whenever I can. Next, number 12, is another book that my sister has, and that is A Court of Mist and Fury. So the second book in this trilogy is my favorite, as I think it is for a lot of people. I really connected with Feyre in this book and um, her going through her trauma and realizing that the person she thinks is meant for her just isn't and that that is never a clean break. It's never the same for both of you. It really reminds me of this song, um, break even by the script where when a heart breaks, it doesn't break even. And I just think that is so true in this series. And I love how Reese is there to comfort her and not push anything onto her, but give her another option of a different life that she didn't think she could have now that she's Faye and doesn't know what to do with it. Um, I'll definitely have put a warning at the beginning of this video that there will be spoilers for these things because whatever. But that's why it's my favorite. And I love all the rest of the books Sarah has written, but A Court of Mist and Fury shocked me. It had me in tears. It had me just crushed. And then it gave me hope again. And I love that about that book. And that's why it's my favorite. No matter what controversial things people like to say, I have a soft spot for that book. Next, I have my only nonfiction that is on this list, and this is a book I actually read quite a few years ago, but it stuck with me, and that is Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand, which is a biography of Louis Zamperini, who was a World War II vet who survived a Japanese concentration camp many, many weeks, shipwrecked, um, afloat at sea, not shipwrecked, he would be just lost at sea and his story of survival and then faith at the end of it. And it was so amazing to me because he learns forgiveness in this story for the people who did those things to him and made him lose his, um, because he was an Olympian before he was ever in the war. And it's such an amazing story. The things that happened to Louis, you wouldn't even believe that they're real because they're just crazy. Um, this is great on audio as well as this book. I read the book before there was ever a possibility of a movie, so it's not like I just jumped on this bandwagon. I loved it. So I definitely suggest it. Um, hard content in here, but Laura Hildebrand, I had also read Seabiscuit by her when I was a kid. I love the book about Seabiscuit because it's about a horse, and horses are one of my favorite animals. But the story about Louie, a human, is just amazing, and the way she tells the story is heartbreaking, beautiful, and so touching. Um, yeah, it's amazing. This is my number 11. All right, getting into the top 10 here. Number 10 was also a new edition from last year, and I'm actually rereading it this month, and I'm going to see if it's still on this list after that. I have a feeling that it will be, if not even higher than it is now. And that is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. This is the tale of Angel, who is a prostitute, who is just trying to scrape out a living. She keeps trying to earn her way out of the living that she's in. But Angel is very beautiful and nobody wants to let her go. Until she meets Michael Hosea, who feels that he ha he's been asking God for a wife. Um, he is a faithful man. He is a hardworking honest, honorable man, and God tells him to take Angel as a wife. Um, and when Angel gets severely beaten by her pimp, she sees Michael as an escape, but he won't take her out of that situation unless she marries him because he won't take her home with him if she's not his wife. Um, and thus begins a battle of wills and one of the greatest love stories I've ever read, and I'm a sucker for romance. So, don't let the religious tomes in this scare you if that's something that you're scared of. It is one of the most romantic, heartbreaking, beautiful, gut-wrenching romances I've ever read. And I highly suggest you give it a try. But be prepared with the Kleenex. Like, I'm so excited to read this again. But I'm terrified because I cried so much the first time. It was so good. Number nine. Drums of Autumn by Naomi Gabaldon. You knew there was going to be an Outlander book on here, right? Right. This is my favorite novel in the series. It is a book of family coming back together, of being torn apart, of terrible hardships, of romance, of 
heartbreak and of overcoming your trauma. Um, the characters in this book, Jamie, Claire, and their daughter, Brianna, and Brianna's love, Roger, they go through so many things when they try to make New America their home. And it's a story of uh, the frontier spirit or the settler's spirit, whatever you want to call it, but also of the harsh reality that America is more difficult than they were expecting. And this is my favorite novel of the series. I reread it this year. Um, I'm doing a reread of the entire Outliner series this year, so we'll see if this is still my favorite. Um, but I'm pretty sure it will be, because Diana's writing is amazing, and I just want to be with these characters all the time. They're amazing. Number eight, we have my entrance from the Hunger Games series, and that is Catching Fire. I think this is the same for a lot of people, that Catching Fire is your favorite in the trilogy. I love so much about it. For me, it is peak wonderfulness of Katniss, because she just went through this horrible thing. She survived. She lived. She Not only did she live, but her friend and foe lover, Peta, lived too. But the capital isn't ready to let you go. And once you win, the price of winning is that you need to tow the capital line. She doesn't just get to live in peace, which is all that she wanted. She has to keep up the act. And there's more than one side that wants to use her for their gain. And how Katniss reacts to that, how she deals with it, is very interesting to me. And though I do think, as a lot of people do, that the story falls apart in Mockingjay, this to me is a heartbreaking, beautiful, wonderful story of two people becoming the best of friends while keeping so many secrets from each other, while just trying to stay alive and keep their families alive. And it's so good. I love this book. I can't wait to reread this trilogy this year as well. You can tell there's a trend of me wanting to reread my favorite books. And we're not done with that yet. But this is the one I'm most looking forward to in the trilogy of reading again. Next, I have Inheritance by Christopher Paolini, which I am also rereading this um, quad, this quartet of books again. Um, this is my favorite one in this series because it wraps everything up and I feel that Christopher as a 12, 13 year old when he started this story, how he could, or maybe it was 15, maybe I'm saying he's a little too young, but I know he had the idea in his head for a long time to have laid those seeds out way back then and then be able to wrap them up in this novel is just amazing to me. And I love his storytelling. I know a lot of people call it juvenile, but I read this very young. This is one of the books, Aragon is one of the books that I read right after um, Twilight, which again, thank you Twilight. Um, I don't know why Twilight led me to this, but I was like, oh, fantasy, and not realizing it's a completely different kind of fantasy, obviously. But I love Aragon. Recently in a video, I said he's one of the characters I think grows up the most in a series, and I think that's true. And the adventures he goes on have always been close to my heart. And I can't wait to look at them again as an older person and see what I think of him now. But I I love dragons. Here be dragons. <laughs> my favorite book from the Sword of Truth series, which y'all know is one of my favorite um, fantasy sagas. And that is Faith of the Fallen by Terry Goodkind. This is the sixth in the novel in the Sword of Truth series. Just love Richard in this one. I've been loving him through all the other books, but this is the first time we really have to see him on his own again since he's put together his team. He, through unforeseen seen circumstances, ends up away from his loved ones. And it's really who he is going to be at the end of the day. Like, what kind of man is he going to be when no one is looking kind of thing. And will he remain faithful to his vows, to his wife, to his cause, when everything is just pushing him to give it up and his life would be so much easier. Um, and I love this. I love Richard Rall. He is a character who being in his world changed me. And this is also a world I'd love to go back to. I'm not planning a reread of this this year, <laughs> but I will sometime because there are a few books left that I haven't finished in the companion series. I finished all of them in The Sword of Truth, but it is an endeavor that is quite daunting and I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. And now we've entered my top five. Are there a few of my books you haven't seen on here yet that you're expecting? Well, this one, I think you probably were. 
and that's Graceling by Kristen Kishore. I read this book um, quite a few years ago as well. Um, I've done a retro review for this book. Um, I love Katza. I think she's so feisty. I think the gift that she has of survival fits so well into what I think a lot of women have to do um, in medieval times, in in Victorian times, and now, just whenever it is. like, And not just women, but like we all have the innate deepness in us to survive. Someone's dog just howled outside. Wow. And Katza, who is a Graceling, which means she's blessed with supernatural powers, she embodies that more than anyone else I've ever read about, of finding the possibilities, of finding the possibilities in every situation and making the best out of that. And she is such a fun person to read about. She's a little bit dense sometimes, but that's okay. She's naive and, you know, I have a soft spot for that. Next, I have a book that I don't think I've actually ever talked about on my channel before because it doesn't come up, but it's been one of my favorite books since I was probably 13 years old, which is the first time I read it, and it shocked me and just, mm, it just shocked me. And that is Just Listen by Sarah Dessen. This is a contemporary which all Sarah Dessens are. Um, this is about a girl named Annabelle who was sexually assaulted by one of her friends, his boy, her, her boyfriend. And she has been keeping this a secret for the last however many months because her family's going through a lot of things. One of her sisters is anorexic. The other sister has moved away and is going through some things. Her parents are dealing with all of this and Annabelle is just the good girl. Nothing is ever wrong. Everything is fine. And she doesn't want to tell because she knows it will break her family. Um, and after this assault happens to her and she ends up kind of on her own, she meets someone um, named Owen who really just helps her find her voice. Um, and I love that. I know I said I wouldn't do a synopsis, but I haven't talked about this book on my channel before. And it has such a close place in my heart. It's so good. This is, I don't read a lot of contemporary. I've read a lot more since starting this channel, but this was one author that I always read every book that she writes, whether they're good or bad, because of this book. I will always pick up Sarah Dessen's books. Such a good story. Now we get to even another new entry, and this book in this series just was so good. I talked about it a lot this year, so you won't be surprised, but she is, the character in this is my favorite heroine. Like, I can't think of anyone who compares with her except maybe one character that we're getting close to, um, but that is The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson, and of course, I'm speaking of Leah. Um, this series was a whirlwind for me. I read the whole thing in a month this year and I read it on a recommendation of a friend and I didn't regret a second. Um, the start of this series with Leah running away and wanting to start her own life and trying to escape her duty, which then comes back around until she takes on way more of a duty than she was ever supposed to have and continuously sacrifices of herself, sacrifices her love, sacrifices her happiness to save an entire country of people, two countries of people, is so inspiring to me. And it was done in a way that, if it could be, was so believable to me for a fantasy series. And I just loved her brains and how she thought out situations and how... But she didn't always win. Like, she isn't always the smartest person in the room. She just refuses to give up. And I love that about Leah. I think we can all learn something from her. Um, and I adore this series. And I myself am shocked that when I was putting this list together, I just kept moving this book up higher and higher. And here it sits at number three. And I, I'm as surprised as you. All right. Here we go. You were probably all getting a little worried that this series wouldn't be on here. <laughs> um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. Yes, yes, I couldn't make a top list without having Harry Potter on here. And I did debate between book three and book 
seven for which is my favorite because I do adore <laughs> the prisoner of Azkaban but I just had to have the ultimate finale because I feel like it again wraps up a lot of things and whether or not we're someone who wants to fall into the plot hole game which that was one of my choices on my poll is should I do Harry Potter plot holes um I still love this series and I will still defend it until my dying breath <laughs> even though you know, it may have issues. It holds such a good spot in my heart. Um, I'm not uttering this sentence the way you mean it, but it reminds me a little of Twilight and it revitalized my love of fantasy and a different kind of fantasy. One where there's a group, there's a team working on something together. Um, one where there's a chosen one who has to selflessly give of who they are to save everyone else. And I love that. And this whole crew... There isn't a world I've more completely fallen into than this one. And so it has to be number two. And then finally, if none of you said this book, I don't know what my purpose of booktube is because I've only, you know, repped this book in at least, at least 20 videos last year. It was the second video I ever put up on my channel. And that is East by Edith Pateau. My favorite book of all time. It has not been dethroned in the 12 years that I've been reading it. I read this for the first time when I was 13 years old. I was in eighth grade and I have never fallen away from it. <laughs> I have, I love the way this story is told. I love the retelling of the fairy tale. I love the character of Rose who is a truth seeker, an adventurer, a journeyer, a faithful friend, a courageous love interest. She is so many amazing things. And I love the character of the white bear who is stuck in a tragic situation and is just trying to make the best of it. I love the troll queen who just wants happiness and is going about it in the wrong way. I love father and Eddie and mother who just want their family to be happy, but they are keeping secrets. And I think everyone should read East, obviously. It's my favorite. Um, it is a very easy read. It's very quick. And I hope that it also finds a special place in your heart. So that's my list, friends. Those are my 15 favorite books of all time. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little piece of my heart because that's what this is. And thank you so much for your dedicated watching of my channel, whether this is the first time you've ever stumbled across me or whether you've been here since the beginning. I appreciate you so much. And this time right now where my channel is small but growing is so cool to me because I see other friends who their channels are just blowing up and I'm so happy for them and yeah I want that to happen to me too I would be lying if I said otherwise but I am going to enjoy and savor this time where I'm able to speak to every one of you who reaches out to me and I hope that we can continue to grow together and that you'll keep coming back so Thank you so much. And again, my name is Jen and this is The Book Refuge. And I make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you can watch some more videos right now.